Hello, Christy here with Little Roots Ranch. And today we're gonna to talk about the different types of reproduction within cucumbers. Now, if you're growing cucumbers, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're growing cucumbers, you should know that the cucumbers are only produced by the female flowers. But do you know which plants have different proportions of female versus male plants? That's what we're gonna talk about today. So it's really cold and windy. It's so windy outside, so I'm inside today. So you won't hear any turkeys in the background, so I apologize. But today we're gonna to talk about, like I said, the different reproductive types of cucumbers. And there's four different types, mainly three, but there are four. So jumping right in, first we're gonna talk about monaceous. And I know it's a <laughs> the word the, the the names of the words are not easy to pronounce, but the spelling is M O N O E C I O U S, monaceous, monaceous. Sorry. So the important thing to know is that this is the standard cucumber, your average you know run of the mill seed house cucumber from anywhere big box stores or specialized seed houses, wherever you're getting it, it's a standard cucumber and it's got both male and female uh, flowers. The males are there to provide the pollen, that's what the bees love, and those pollinate the female flowers. Now, it's not a one-to-one. -one. What you're gonna get when you start these cucumbers is you're first gonna get like 10 to 20 male flowers and you're gonna be like where are my cucumbers but those don't produce the cucumbers so you gotta wait a little bit then you'll get a female flower and then you'll get like 10 to 20 more male flowers then you'll get a female flower and this will continue over a long harvesting period these types monoecious are really great for you plant one or well not one but you plant however many and you enjoy cucumbers over the entire season they they yield pretty good but you're not going to get an extreme harvest but you're going to get a longer harvest period so this is great if you want to if you're just growing for yourself and you want to incorporate cucumbers into salads or you know and enjoy by yourself or with your family or friends like you know, over an extended period of time. So that's one type. And again, far the most common, the most common, common type of reproductive or reproductive type of cucumber. Next is genocious. And that is spelled G-Y-N-O-E-C-I-O-U-S. And it's important to note that those are all female plants or almost all. Almost all means about 70 to 100% of the plants are going to yield exclusively female flowers. Now, you, they still need pollination. So what does that mean or how do you navigate that? Well, what most seed companies will do is that they will include about 10 to 15% of the seeds they will include, include the reproductive type of the first one we talked about, which is monoecious. And so, but you can't tell which is which. You, so that one important thing to note with these type is that you have to plant all of your seeds. Because if you have a seed packet of say 50 and you only plant five, what if you plant all five of the genocious? and then you're not gonna have any male flowers to pollinate those, and without pollination, you're not gonna have any cucumbers. So yes, that's very, very important. Now, why do people grow these type? Because they're early and they're high yielding. They don't grow over as long of a period, harvest period. So these would be one that you would succession plant, meaning plant a couple spaced out, you know, two weeks, one month, whatever, depending on your growing season, and enjoy a large, quick harvest, but it's not gonna keep producing and producing and producing. Um, so I think I covered all of it. Yes, okay. The next type is 
Parthenocarpic. Now, <laughs> that one's, I, I, I kind of like saying that one. The spelling on that is P-A-R-T-H-E-N-O-C-A-R-P-I-C. It's a long one. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a spelling bee. Um, but what's important to note about those is that they are self-pollinating, which is awesome, especially if you're growing in a greenhouse because they don't need to be pollinated. And it's harder for pollinators to find, excuse me, to get inside of a greenhouse, hoop house, any kind of enclosed structure, um, because that's not really always the point of having the enclosed structure. So these ones will self pollinate, which is amazing. They're also generally called the seedless. And you might know them as like English or Asian types. And <clears throat> if you're wondering if you accidentally bought this type, don't worry. The price is significantly more expensive. And so you're not gonna accidentally purchase that. If you were to buy say 25 seeds for $6 of, of say Monetius, you're gonna get like 10 seeds for like $10 of the Parthenocarpic. It's not, you're not gonna accidentally get that. There's a lot that goes into creating a seedless variety that is self-pollinating. And so therefore it's gonna be a little bit, a little bit more expensive. So those are the three main types of uh, reproductive types of cucumbers. But there is a fourth, you're just likely not gonna run across it. And that's where it's actually a version of two of the things we've already talked about. One, parthenocarpic, which means self-pollinating. And two, genocious, which means all female flowers. So you've got all female flowers that self-pollinate themselves. You're thinking, wow, that's the jackpot, right? These seeds are clearly the most expensive and they're usually grown in a greenhouse, but not only in a greenhouse, they have to be completely isolated from pollinating insects. Bees, even ants and, and other uh, crawly critters that, that like to pollinate, because they're also pollinators, not at high of, as high of a, a level. But, so usually these are greenhouses with insect limiting mesh all the way around. And so because if they are pollinated by any of the other types, it's going to be the, the cucumber is going to be not going to be what you want. And, you know, you're not going to want to eat it or sell it or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so again, to recap real quickly, we have Monetius. That is your standard male and female on the same plant even yield over a long period of time your everyday cucumber odds are if you've grown cucumbers you've probably grown these type definitely the most popular most common then genocious and remember 70 to 80 percent female basically all female but you still need those pollinator plants and you have to plant the whole uh packet because you need to make sure you get those pollinator plants and those are going to be early and high yielding. Then there's Parthenocarpic. <laughs> Sorry, I always say it wrong because I don't say it very often or I read it like when I'm buying my seeds. Parthenocarpic. <laughs> and those are the self-pollinating ones. They're a little bit more spendy, but they're really convenient, especially if you're wanting to grow in a greenhouse and the Cadillac of the cucumber seeds, which is the Parthenocarpic <laughs> as well as Genocious, which are all female and self-pollinating. So again, it's important to understand the reproductive um, the reproductive types of cucumbers so that way you can best plan your garden and you can understand i see a lot of people asking why don't i have any cucumbers or why aren't my cucumber you know problems with pollination and there's a bunch of different things that that can lead to that but what you really want to do is at least have the basic understanding of what types of cucumbers that you are growing and how to 
give them the best for so they can reproduce and give you tasty cucumbers so you can make pickles and in salads or i love sliced cucumbers with um oh uh, what's it called italian dressing the the clear one with all like the little herbs and oils and stuff I think that is the best snack in the world. But anyways, I now that I'm thinking about all the cucumbers and I'm thinking about summer and like the sandwiches and salads and all that, so now I'm craving it. And of course, it's so cold outside and windy, but I hope this did everything to explain. If you have any questions or if there's a certain, if I left anything out or if you um, recommend like certain types of cucumbers or your experience, especially if you're zone 8B Pacific Northwest, go ahead and drop those down below. And I hope you grow really tasty cucumbers and I hope you enjoy them and are looking forward to the coming season, growing season as much as I am. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.